Hi, this is David Voss, CCIE 11372. And in this video, we're going to be covering Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol. We'll do an overview, review BPDUs, look at port states, port roles, and port types. And finally, we'll talk about some of the enhancements of Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol over its predecessors. Now, the 802.1D standard was designed at a time when network recovery was not expected to be immediate, and times certainly have changed. And thus, the 802.1W standard, Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol, significantly reduces the time taken for Spanning Tree Protocol to converge when a link failure occurs. Now, network failure to an alternate path can occur in sub-second time frame. So it performs better than traditional Spanning Tree Protocol, with no additional configuration. And note, the 802.1W BPDU is similar and backward compatible with the 802.1D. BPDUs are sent every hello time interval, which is two seconds by default, and it's the non-root bridges which generate these BPDUs. Topology change notification BPDUs, or TCNs, originated by a switch are relayed up to the root bridge which then propagates them to all of the other downstream switches. These are some of the most important concepts that you'll need to grasp as you prepare for your CCMP switch exam. Now please note that 802.1D may have had five different port states, but 802.1W has three, discarding, learning, and forwarding. And you can count on the fact that you'll be asked about that in your exam. In 802.1W, there are port roles. Uh, there's the root port, defined as the port that receives the best BPDU from the root bridge. It provides the shortest path to the root bridge. And then there's the designated port, which is an active forwarding port that actually points away from the root bridge and toward the edge of the network. It sends the best BPDU on a segment. There's the alternate port, which is the non-forwarding blocking port that backs up a root port. And then there's the backup port, which receives better BPDUs from the same bridge rather than from a different bridge. It's a non-forwarding blocking port, and it backs up a designated port on the same segment. It's much easier to draw these out so we can get a better understanding of what these ports are actually doing and what they actually look like on the network. So here we have our network and we have three switches all interconnected and our first switch is our root. We'll call it switch one and switch two and switch three. So switch one is the root. And again, they're all interconnected. So the designated port on the root is going to be both links. There's no root port on a root because remember, root ports, as you see here on switch two, are the ports that have the best path back to the root. And in switch three has a root port and then a designated port. Now remember, a port is designated if it can send the best BPDU on the segment to which it is connected. On a given segment, there can only be one path toward the root bridge, and if there are two, there's a bridging loop in the network. Therefore, there is one designated port between switch two and switch three. Now you see the alternate port. Alternate port and backup ports have something in common. They are both blocked ports. The alternate port is simply the alternate path for that segment. It's not the designated port for the segment, so it's moved into a blocking or alternate port status. An alternate port receives more useful BPDUs from another bridge, so therefore it is port blocked. Now a backup port receives more useful BPDUs from the same bridge it is on, and it is port blocked. What makes 802.1W perform so well is that the rapid transition feature allows RSTP to place ports in a forwarding state without having to rely on any timer configuration. 
Now, in order to achieve fast convergence on a port, the protocol relies on two new variables. These are edge ports, which are generally connected to uh, endpoint devices, workstations. This immediately goes into a forwarding state by using the port fast feature. Next, there's link type. RSTP supports two different link types, point to point, and that's a port that operates in full duplex mode and shared on a port that operates in half duplex mode. There's some other enhancements you need to be aware of with 802.1w. Uh, first, uplink fast. Uplink fast provides fast convergence using uplink groups in the network access layer. So an uplink group is actually, it consists of the root port, which as you know is forwarding, and then a set of block ports. And it provides an alternate path in case the currently forwarding link fails, and it does so immediately. Backbone Fast provides faster convergence in the network backbone after a spanning tree topology change occurs. So Backbone Fast detects indirect link failures, and when the switch receives inferior BPDUs from its designated bridge, and when it does that, it indicates that the designated bridge has lost its connection to the root bridge, and it immediately, <clears throat> it immediately chooses another path back to root. Let's go ahead and jump into the lab and enable rapid spanning tree protocol and uh, also program uplink fast and backbone fast. So we log into a switch and we type spanning tree mode and then we choose rapid PVST. And quite simply, that's all you need to enable it. So that's enabled on the switch now. And we are going to go ahead and show. Now you can see that rapid spanning tree protocol is enabled for all of our VLANs. You also see the hello time, max age, and forward delay timers are set to their defaults of 2, 20, and 15. We are going to make, let's make this switch the root. And we do so by spanning tree VLAN 1 root primary. And we're going to make it the root for VLAN 1 and 10. And by doing so, we allow ourselves to be root for certain VLANs, but not all VLANs. And as you can see here, the bridge is the root. There's some other designations that you can tell that this is root because we're not going to have any root ports. And you will see here, we have no root ports as well in VLAN 10. Also the MAC address for root ID and bridge ID match. So that's another way you can tell that your bridge is in fact root. Let's go ahead and enable uplink fast. And as you can see, it's quite simple. We just type spanning tree uplink fast and that's enabled on the switch. It's as simple as doing that for backbone fast as well. And to monitor uplink fast and back foam fast, you simply type in show spanning tree uplink fast. And then you can also do show spanning tree backbone fast. So here's what you've learned. You've received an overview of RSTP. You've learned about RSTP BPDUs, port states, port roles, port types, and the enhancements. We also jumped into the lab and programmed uh, RSTP. We enabled it and then enabled uplink fast and backbone fast. And we also took a look at ways you can monitor it as well. 
This is a great foundation for you for RSTP and good luck in your future studies. Thank you.